What's up, people? Welcome to another episode of Interview with Adam and You. Today, I just have a few names for you. I'll just read them out. Uh, Behra, you know what? I'll just do an Arya Stark with this one. Behram Jamadar, Charles Shobaraj, Raman Raghav, Cyanide Malika, Surinder Kohli. <laughs> if you haven't guessed it already, these are the names of some of the most notorious serial killers in India. Now you must be wondering ki main ye serial killers ka naam kyu le raha hu I'll tell you in a bit but before that please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon because we bring awesome conversations every single week and don't forget to check the new playlist that we've created called AWA Shorts which has highlights from every single conversation My guest today is a psychologist a counselor a researcher who has co-authored a book called Twisted a profile on Indian serial killers it was a very interesting conversation because I got to discuss Uh, the mind of a serial killer with a psychologist we spoke about some of the most notorious serial killers of india and we also discussed the way they used to kill we discussed the scope of forensic psychology in india and we also discussed how the indian investigation system views serial killers in general it was a very dark conversation but it was fun at the same time ladies and gentlemen please welcome my guest all the way from mumbai sampada karandikar gutne lag rahe hain isko Anyway, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, thank you for doing this short Mumbai to Pune <laughs> trip for us. Yeah, it was really sweet. You no, know, really, because I mean we are new, so we aren't used to such respect. You did train, right? Yeah. Yeah. So doing that just to be on the show, <laughs> it, it really means a lot to us. So thank you. Um, to be honest, uh, I would take any excuse to have those train cutlets. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh. So, yeah. I no, now, now I feel know. hurt. So <laughs> it, yeah, because train cutlets over eight of you. <laughs> yeah. And before we, I before we, you know, start with the dark stuff. Yeah, I really want to give a big shout out to your co-author. Yeah. Uh, and I also want Shirish Thora. Shirish. Yeah, I I I think that he's a badass. And I don't say that casually. I don't say that casually. I say that out of respect because he says stuff and he's you know, he says stuff that most of the people are shit scared of. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Right. Yeah. So, how was how was your experience like working with Shirish? Um, it was great because uh, he was uh, I mean very supportive throughout the journey because this is my uh, first book, right? And I didn't really know, uh, you know, like how to go, go about, about it. it. Yeah. So uh, he was very supportive throughout the whole process. He gave me as much. Uh, time as i needed or you know supportive in the sense of like putting me in touch with people also because uh, he served uh, as a cop mm. uh, for about 10 years yeah so in that sense he did uh, have a lot of uh, contacts or you know right, access right. to like case materials or yeah. access to people who could you know give us a lot of material which who, whose idea people. was twisted who uh, came up with the idea was he conceptualized uh, the whole thing right and uh when i spoke to him uh the basic thing that came out of uh, our uh, initial conversation mm-hmm. uh was that uh there isn't really a uh, uh, work or like a seminal work on uh, indian serial such, killers on indian uh, serial. serial killers right. like nobody has you know really gone to those steps to analyze you know how these personalities is he, is he fun working with he looks like oh, yeah. looks like that, yeah uh, he keeps tagging me on you know cool funny stuff all the book stuff yeah, and yeah. he is very active with social media as well he is he and he, is and he pushes good. people like yeah ye kar ye kar ye kar he's very verbal about it whenever yes does. and that was extremely useful for me because right, right. uh i was being like a really anxious person yeah. even uh, when you know when i took this on uh-huh. and i did take it on because it was something that was of interest to me right but then uh like there used to be times when i just didn't know how to you know go about stuff mm-hmm. or there used to be like huge like writers blocks or you know sometimes i wouldn't have the time to actually sit and write also right. because i was doing a bunch of other things as well right so in uh, those times he was you know really supportive really understanding so he gave you the pep talk at that time he did uh. give me a lot of pep talks <laughs> and uh, that actually you know 
Yeah. I can't wait for him to come to India. I really want to interview him. Like, I, I mean, yeah, yeah, it, it'll be really cool. And I think we'll have a lot of fun talking to him. I, I'm sure. I can't, can't, can't wait for that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, one thing. So before we, you know, uh, dive into this abysmal darkness of sickest of minds, <laughs> I want to know how did you get into psychology? Forensic psychology. How did, because I'll share something. Okay. Jab main, and and you know what? This is a confession. No friend of mine knows. I think I'm going to say this for the first time. So here's the thing. People often ask this question, if you don't do this, what do you do, right? Right. People often so if I wasn't writing and doing a podcast, right, I I wish, I, I wanted to be a counsellor, like a psychologist. Oh. Yeah, and you know, especially forensic, forensic, because I don't know, everyone is inclined towards this stuff, right? So I really wanted to do that. Uh, unfortunately, in our schools, I've so... They were good schools, but they didn't have such subjects. I, I don't think even still people don't have, you know, in schools, they don't let you know anything about psychology. Like behavioral sciences. Yeah, exactly. I'm not saying go, you know, those, uh, what, psychosexual stages yeah. to teach those to children. But at least, you know, some idea, some yeah. idea. So that someone who has an inclination huh. towards, I mean, my school didn't have arts first time. Pe. It was like, right. yeah, this bhaag dhoor lagye ki medical, yeah. society mein medical ki or non-medical ki zada wo hai, value commerce ki kama, so you choose like that. So, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I think the 11th and 12th grades do have uh, psychology now. No, uh, now, yeah, yeah, now maybe, now, I'm talking now. like 2004 yeah, to 2006. But back then probably. No, 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 there wasn't. So yes, please, please tell us that how did you get into this? Since you also call yourself a, you know, you know, a, what, pop culture vulture, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, was it because you so, saw a lot of movies, you know, what, uh, you know? So, that is actually, that is a, you know, part of why I decided I, I was guessing, to yeah. uh, pursue uh, forensic psychology. But, uh, I mean, overall, it is an interesting field, right? Like, very what drives people to go and commit crime? Because everybody has issues and, you know, they manifest differently in every person. Hmm. So, uh, say two people have... So, looking for, you know, was it your, you know, thirst to, uh, you know, study criminology or um, mind of a criminal? That led you to study psychology? How did you choose psychology, you know? Then, Uh, obviously, you chose forensic. So, it was... Uh, that initiative Mm. although now I have sort of diversified a bit and I am not uh, purely pursuing a forensic psychology I'm a researcher as well Mm. so I do do a lot of research uh, in other uh, personality traits and uh, curiosity and information exchange Mm. and those sort of areas as well that's this uh, company that you work with right uh, yes I work with a research institute we'll talk about that we'll talk about Monk Prayogshala yes Oh, the monk, monk, as in the, the, that monk, the uh, old monk, wala monk. We're talking that monk. <laughs> no, so so if you see, if you go and see our logo, it's actually a monkey. Oh. So the whole, I think the whole, like the philosophy behind it was that everybody starts off as a monkey, but right. aspires to become a monk. Monk Prayogshala. Very so interesting. That's how. Very inter- yeah. we, 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 let's talk about that later. Yes. But then, yeah, how did you get into forensic? Um. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, that was uh, my, you know, initial exposure to a lot of, like, crime dramas and mm, stuff. Mm, yeah. And uh, also, you know, when you think that, uh, say, two people uh, have undergone same uh, sort of issues uh, throughout their lives or uh, through their childhood or whatever. Right. But then one person just decides to, you know, go and do something extreme mm. because of those issues where the other person is probably able to handle them better right. or you know they manifest in some other more socially acceptable way right okay i'm gonna say something very elementary that will be very elementary yeah. but is it like the imbalance between id and super what do you call that id? Super ego. yeah so, so something so that dictates uh, the behavior of a person yeah i that does have a large part to uh, play in the sense that a person's morality or a person's uh, moral beliefs okay. or a person's beliefs about how you know other people's morality should be uh-huh. so uh, if suppose uh, there is something that another person is doing that you don't morally essentially agree with right there is a chance that you know that your reaction to it would manifest in a much uh, 
anti-social way mm. as compared to somebody else who would be more tolerant or more accepting right. of the difference that's right, there right, between right. you mm. and that person. So uh, it's that, and uh, this is an aspect that we have actually discussed uh, in a book, okay. in the book as uh, right. well. Right. So uh, yeah, it. Okay. Let's just start with the book then. I mean, yeah. So, uh, so we also want to know your input. Uh, ki current, uh, you know, investigation system. Hmm. Um, when it comes to serial killers hmm. so would you like to tell us about the book first and then let's just talk about what changes are necessary or what do right. we need to talk about when it comes to you know yeah. forensic psychology and you know investigation so yeah let's just ha- what is this all about uh, yes. so uh, Twisted basically uh, yeah yeah, they should see it once. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah so uh, Twisted basically uh, chronicles uh, 24 uh, Indian serial killers. 24. This is and first volume. So this, this is one... volume 1. Okay. Okay. So uh, right now we were actually not uh, able to include some people who, whose sentencing has still mm-hmm. not happened. Mm-hmm. So we have only included the ones that have actually been committed uh, by law. Yeah. And uh, the timeline ranges from 1800s to the present. 18 Indian serial killers since 1800. Since 1800. Oh, okay. Are we talking about that one who used to strangulate people? Uh, so the one from the 1800s, the one uh, who like you know really pissed the British off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, was a uh, Behram Thug Behram. He's Thug one. Behram. He killed yes, more than 400 people, right? He killed. So on record, he has killed about 900 plus people. But it's estimated uh, to be a lot more than that. Lot more than 900. So he himself has killed more than. So it, it wasn't just him, but uh, he was part of a thuggy cult. Right. right. So uh, he had like these uh, followers who also used to kill people on his uh, huh, command. Okay. And uh, this cult is really interesting because they were all uh, followers of Kali. Kali Mata. And uh, they thought or they had this uh, belief that uh, they need to kill people to sacrifice kill, yeah as sacrifice to Kali Mata uh-huh. and uh, they also used to believe that this is something that will prevent the Kali Yuk from coming okay right so that's what their entire you know psyche revolved around right but that wasn't just all hmm. because they were not really you know beneath like just you know doing that but they used to also rob the people that mm. they have killed okay so essentially their motives were uh, twofold in that sense right. that they wanted so just a question out of curiosity that, yeah. is it right to call him a serial killer then like is it because you know so the uh, this is more so of a cult basis, and you know people were motivated people for example correct. a terrorist right just saying for yeah. a terrorist so they also come and kill mm-hmm. repeatedly. So it's just that they are trained to do that. Correct. So you can differentiate that. Okay, he's yes. not, you know, he's not someone who's talking and you know yes, the right. typical serial killer behavior. So isn't that something like that? Um, not really, because uh, these people were essentially driven by a belief that they need to kill mm-hmm. in order to appease a deity or you know in order okay. to achieve okay. something. So. So somehow it's very similar to terrorists <laughs> as well. Okay. Yeah, but there are a lot more, you know, elements but to terrorism. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of politics involved uh, as well. Crime. Yeah. Correct, yeah. A lot of politics as hmm. well. And uh, also, uh, I think that is something that will be clear uh, once, you know, you read the book because we have addressed uh, four categories within which serial killers fall. Okay, right. And uh, the cult uh, essentially falls into one of the categories uh, called mission-oriented uh, serial killers wherein they are, you know, just driven by this one belief that right. this is something that we need to do for the greater good of uh-huh. whatever. Uh-huh. So there are four categories that we have uh, discussed in detail, and each of the serial killers uh, fall under. Is it possible that Thug Behram? Thug Behram? Hmm. I, I said that right, right? Yes. It was Thug, Thug Behram. So Thug, Thug Behram uh, just liked killing people, and you know he made a cover up and all. Is it possible since we're talking about serial killers? 
because he, I, I have read about him. Awesome. I read, he, yeah. he used to strangle it with his kamar band. That's what yes, that, that was his yeah. modus so operandi. So the kamar right? band was essentially uh, something that they believed that Kali had given them ah, as the weapon. Yeah, now I can people. relate. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Kali and kamar yes. band. Yes. Right, right. And who else? Who else? That's one. So that's 1800. That's uh, 1800. Yeah. Then uh, we have some uh, ones that were uh, that enjoyed a lot of media attention. We have Raman. But don't they all do? I mean, they want Not their name out really. there, right? No. Yes, yes, they do. They do. Yeah. But uh, I mean, we haven't really seen all of them in the media in that much frequency as people such as say. Charles Sobraj or uh, huh. Raman Ratha right, right, have right. been. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that is uh, something that's definitely there. They do perpetrate these acts, some of them at least do, so that, you know, they can get that sort of a negative publicity in some are, sense. Are, are we talking about uh, the Bikini Killer as well in this? Charles Sobraj, yeah, yes. We are? In this volume? It is there. Nice. Tell me about him, man. Like he's one of the most famous serial killers of India, right? Yeah, he is. Um, so his is a very, you know, weird case because his was a very. Uh, he was, I think, of uh, a dual uh, lineage. So he was half Indian and uh, I think half I, Vietnam. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he did have a lot of. Um, a lot of internal struggle, I guess, okay. with, you know, respect to his identity and such. Okay. Disturbed so, childhood or what? Like? Uh, yes, disturbed childhood. Right. He did. And that is actually a common thread between a lot of serial killers. They tend disturbed to have child. some sort of, like, childhood disturbances or, you know, okay. abused in uh, childhood or, you know. Why do you think parents. that happens? Why do you think if someone, as a kid, you know, hmm. maybe got sexually abused, maybe got beaten up, hmm. molested, whatever, blah, blah. Hmm. Why? Is it like a person's innate tendency to become like that? Or that just the incidents, just incidents like, you know, abuse or something, they hmm. trigger this thing inside a person, but they were always like that? Or do you think that because of that incident, they, you know, there's some chemical imbalance and then they start, you know. So in some cases, they could be predisposed to perpetrating uh, you know antisocial things right but uh, what experiences they have had in uh, childhood uh, or you know whatever their dark mm. experience was that is really likely to sort of you know trigger a belief system uh -huh. that since you know I was abused or you know since this happened to me which I do not deserve okay so like what difference does it make if you know I make others also suffer? Right. Or is it that maybe he was he or she is mm. scarred and you know has suffered, mm. so he wants to get an upper hand on life in general and wants to feel that so, you know control over someone and that yes, that is uh, also and these kids who are disturbed or who have this mm. uh, you said predisposition right mm. is that the correct term yeah. yeah. So if people like these. So, they also show signs of violence towards animals, right? Mm -hmm. So, in, in an early age, so they are very, so, okay, confession, I used to, you know, ants and all, mosquitoes mm -hmm. and all, I, I, when I was a kid, have you ever done that? <laughs> Karen? Yeah, actually I have. Yeah, I have, yeah, have, have. so, ants, mosquitoes and all, I, once you I killed them, mosquitoes, I will kill them. I killed them all, yeah, killed like them all. I just any any animal uh, you know rights activist comes and tells don't kill mosquitoes <laughs> you know that, <laughs> kill, kill, kill that person no, as well. You are showing signs of, you know. I was not kidding. Then finally I had to call my brother. I was like, dude, please. I don't know whether you did that in school, but 5th or 6th standard, 7th, 8th, they used to tell us that you cockroach and you had to. On, 
the lab experiment. Yeah, yeah, not the experiment. You have to kill a cockroach, stick it on your scrapbook or whatever, white paper, uh-huh. and not dissect it, dissect it, but uske, malab, tangi, it was a weird thing that you know. Yeah, the dissection thing was, uh, I think, part of uh, biology. So yeah, but we have, we hadn't even reached the biology. So um, let's just get back. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it just became too graphic. But the point was that when it came to ants and all, I'm not saying that I have such, yeah. you know, tendencies. But So even uh, within uh, dark tendencies, there is such thing as clinically. Uh, clinical dispositions and right. subclinical. So, but I'm not saying just killing the ants. No. I was like, you know, doing stuff like I was like. Yeah, people <laughs> and a, and a lot of normal people. Uh, so even even right now, mm. uh, if you you know test like you, me, and her for mm. say subclinical uh, psychopathy, you'll show signs, right? We will have some of the you know tendencies of many of that illnesses belong or in the under the umbrella term right, of right, psychopathy right. but that doesn't necessarily mean that we are we've lost you know, our reason right Maybe. because yeah. it's it's like a it's like a spectrum right. and everybody is likely to fall somewhere in the hmm. spectrum hmm. so people who have like really dark tendencies fall obviously on a much higher uh, right. end of the spectrum and they do things that cause you know larger uh, disasters hmm. than what normal people okay. do usually do so out of uh, so this has eight profiles this has 24 profiles. this has 24 yeah. just this volume yes oh nice and so there's another volume there is another volume how many series <laughs> do we have I, quite a lot okay. see which is why i told you that not a lot of them have really you know come, come up out. in media right. as much okay so another question i i also want to know that which you know this word serial killer it has it carries certain punch right mm. so you are scared. So if I talk about a hitman, let's say Supari Leke Jo Marte, okay? You know, Jahape crime, SC Jagape, Jahape, you know, either politicians have some or whatever, powerful right. gangsters, whatever. So they have hitmen, right? There are some who must have killed, I'm sure who must have killed more than 40, 50 people, right? Definitely. But when it comes to a serial killer who has been tagged as serial killer, usne, even if he has killed seven, the other person, hitman has killed in cold blood, okay? Hmm. But the serial killer, there's this fear attached to serial killer, right? So if I'm talking about a serial killer who has killed five, right? But there will be a fear. I will talk about it at night and I will think that it's not going But you don't think, you think of a hitman as a hardened criminal. So can you like, you know, explain ki why, why is that? Why? Do, because of the movies and all or why? Because of the movies but also when we talk in terms of hitmen, hmm. see there targets are usually certain kind of people right. uh, people who have uh, you know maybe uh, maybe ticked off the person who has who hired the hitman for, yeah, exactly. in the first place and hmm. may, you know people in high places or right such. money whatever blah, yeah, blah, blah blah so hitmen are essentially doing it as a job right you know and they are not doing it because like they are you know, predisposed to or the exact seeking out, out victims right. or they, they are not getting any pleasure out of mm. it and for them it's just like a contract job right? and they are doing it. Right. So the fear of being killed by a hitman, at least for lay people, right. is not essentially there as much as, you know, being kill, killed by a random guy, you know, who might just have like a psychosis in a moment and right. you yeah, might just be at the wrong place at the wrong time right yeah. exactly and and uh, another thing is the way they treat the victim or the body mm-hmm. right they disembowel exactly. they mutilate or yeah. whatever their yeah, kick is necro- necro- yeah yeah, necro- yeah. Necro- yeah. so uh, are we talking about surinder as well in this yes because I, I was talking to Shirish, right? So the first thing when he told that, okay, I'm coming out with this book, blah, blah, blah. We were on, I don't know, Instagram chat. Mm-hmm. We, we either WhatsApp or Insta. So the first thing I asked, because everyone remembers uh, the mm-hmm. Nithari case, right? So the first thing was, I said Mohinder. So okay. I said Mohinder. Then he was like, no, he got acquitted, right? Yes. So he, you can't call him a serial. I don't know what right, went yeah. behind the scenes yeah. or whatever. But Surinder, yeah. So yeah. Tell us about Surinder as well. Mm-hmm. That's like, that's for me, I, people are scared of, I don't know, so, uh, what's his name? The Bikini Killer? Mm-hmm. Oh. Sobraj. Sobraj. Or the Stone Man. They've killed a lot as well. But somehow this was spine chilling. Can you please also describe like the Bikini Killer? Because the name is quite interesting. Uh, we, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. Yeah, yeah we'll come to that. He, he, the same guy we were talking about, Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, before we talk about mm-hmm. the Bikini Killer, 
this really I was I don't know when did this happen I've forgotten the year but the Nithari uh, case it, it was some 10 12 10 years ago 10 years ago no it does so when what, you know skulls of kids Children, yeah. coming out and then necrophilia yeah. and then I, I don't know so yeah that so was really it was also terrifying because this was essentially a affluent person in that a businessman right that guy a neighbor yeah. businessman yeah and uh, his servant was luring kids from that very neighborhood and you know just killing them for uh, pleasure or mm. uh, whatever I think I've heard इसने बूढ़ू का कुछ लेना देना था नो बिकॉज ही बिलीव इन ब्लैक मैजिक एंड स्टाफ और मे बी इट वॉज जस्ट अ स्टोरी आई विल गिव एम अ लॉन्गर लाइफ और आई डोट नो प्रॉबली एंड ऑल्सो ऑन सम लेवल आई थिंक इट वॉज यू नो द एलियनेशन दैट ही फेल्ट बिकॉज द एम्प्लॉज लाइक हिज एम्प्लॉयर वॉज सॉर्ट ऑफ नोन टू यू नो इंडल्ज इन एल्कोहल एंड यू नो इंडल्ज इन prostitution uh-huh. and such are, are we allowed to say that of you are allowed to say anything <laughs> what are you saying <laughs> uh, so um so that so that's the lifestyle he was seeing on a daily basis okay but he was there you know all alone and he didn't really have anybody in life or he didn't really have any means so me, wherein you know you think sexual frustration led to this certain lifestyle Sorry, what? Do you think sexual frustration led to all this? It can be. It can be, yeah. Okay. Shit. So kids. So that is how it manifested because then those kids literally became the easiest mm. victims uh, for him, mm. so to speak. Right. And uh, since we were talking about how he did not have any other means to right. literally do anything else, mm. then it came down to that. Yeah. That for me, that Nithari case was spine chilling because. one that was one of the cases that uh you know came into spotlight when we were growing up so maybe that was our first exposure to yeah. indian serial yeah, killer exactly. or something maybe that's why yeah, exactly. and the whole idea that the uh, you know land the marshy land or whatever hmm. there that was right wahan se bodies ek ke baad ek nikal rahe ek ke baad ek nikal rahe skulls nikal rahe yeah. so that means like you know decade kitni der se chal raha hoga yeah, exactly and it's terrifying because then it makes you think that it can be any person in your neighborhood who you see every day and you know they could have such yeah so dark predisposition exactly neighbors have, would have no idea right yeah so i don't know <laughs> yeah so uh, so i was talking to a few cops as well hmm. oh, we'll talk about the cops word so tell us about this sobraj guy the bikini killer why, why did he get the name bikini killer because it has, it has got nothing to do with bikini right not really but just based on the sort of victims that he had uh, okay women right uh and uh, the i mean the sort of uh, places that he had seeked out his beach areas teams yeah okay i mean that was a component of his entire like, right. modus operandi okay yeah. did you explain so, his modus operandi like what did uh so he was essentially uh, only you know into like getting something material out of his victims I so thought you were going to say you're going into getting laid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I I don't think that would have been a problem for him because he is essentially the you know the kind of textbook uh, psychopath that we talk about like very charismatic and a smooth like talker. Like Ted Bundy. Uh, sort of, yeah. yeah. Smooth talker and you know has his way with the women yeah, and yeah, yeah. like looks wise also he was pretty decent. So it wasn't hard for him to get along with well exactly. women. Exactly. Okay. So and uh, he did have uh, this uh, sort of I forgot the word for it but uh, basically you know like he used to think of himself as being above okay okay people. uh so narcissism. he just have that <laughs> uh yeah narcissism you can say in a way yeah. yeah extreme narcissism i guess yeah So yeah, so he 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 used so to burn them, right? He used he, to kill them and burn them, like he burn, kill them and burn yes, them. Yes, he has drugged people, um, yeah, burn people, right? And, uh, basically, just like uh, rob them. And along the way, along his escapades, he did take lovers who help him uh, kill people. Kill people and rob. He killed them, them as well. Uh no. He robbed them. He did. <laughs> What a guy. <laughs> <laughs> and the and i mean the best or the worst part or whatever is that the people that actually helped him hmm. 
did believe that he was misunderstood in a way and which is why he was doing what he was doing. Mm. So they didn't look at it as though he was doing something wrong. But, but there is no excuse for killing somebody. No, it no, isn't. That, no, but I mean that was the level of his smooth talk. Right. That he, had, he actually had people convinced like, that yeah, people people can, them. Yeah, 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 yeah. People are smart, man. They, 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 they do. Some of, some of the, uh, you know, very famous leaders you know, they have these oratorical skills that they can convince people to do anything just yeah. by the means of, you know, talking. So, this guy, so out of all that you've read hmm. about, not just India, hmm. which is your, you know, you know, which killer sends shivers down your spine? There must be someone, pura world mein kahin pe. I don't know. I can't just say one name. Yeah, but one, one, like... But, okay, I wouldn't... I wouldn't say it was personally terrifying for me, Mm -hmm. but it is certainly terrifying uh, when uh, I was uh, reading and also writing about these uh, sisters, Seema and Renuka Kavit. Okay. Uh, They are in... They are in... in Please tell us about it. Kitna detail de sakte utna because you don't want spoilers. Yeah, I don't want yeah. all the Yeah, exactly. So, however. Uh, you but basically, uh, they used to kidnap kids. Okay. And they used to kill those kids one just once the kids just started becoming inconvenient for them. So, what did they do with the kids? They, they used to kidnap kids to uh, extort money out of other people or, you know, like you know, pretend to be a beggar with a kid so that somebody will take pity on them and, you know, give them some trafficking and it, it is, yeah. But uh, it's a very, you know, they had a very, like, interesting uh, family dynamic with their mother and, okay. you know, the whole thing is what explains why they did what they did. Uh-huh. So, those are the spoilers I wouldn't give because... Yeah, yeah, they're just, you know... Yeah fueled the curiosity. <laughs> yeah. So they were, so even the family, though it was a family business kind of thing that they um, were into it. In, okay, in like, it's okay if you don't way, want to. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, most of the female uh, serial killers are mostly into it for money, material. Money or oh, material. Yes. Uh, because I've heard about this woman called Cyanide Malika. Malika Cyanide Malika. Cyanide Malika, yes. Yeah. She also used to... <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's what you know they, these tabloid guys they do right they just give yeah. you their yeah, titles that's how they catch up yeah she's also another interesting character but I, I don't think I should give all the spoilers yeah, right no, now but yeah but, I, I can't yeah. wait to you know read this one this is like and the best part is when you start reading about such stuff right so you actually have that feeling you know at the back of your head ki you start, you start doubting everyone everyone, doubting. everyone everyone plus you're just scared. even if you're sitting alone yeah. in a locked room right you're scared you're scared you know, ki mere saath ho gaya abhi kuch ho jayega like psychological movies hmm. like, you know these thrillers right. they disturb me way more than a haunted movie would ever yeah because they have that thing attached that it's real it can happen to you ghosts and all okay you yeah, can yeah, they have made it such a way that it actually makes you believe that ye why real life me who I, like, I saw this movie called Poughkeepsie Tapes. Okay. It is so freaky. It's kind of like what Ted Bundy also did. Like mm-hmm. he used to just uh, kidnap women, whatever, mm-hmm. hold them hostage and like do his right. uh, sexual fantasies in a way. And then kill them. And then yeah. kill them. But yeah. they also, for this guy, they didn't manage to kill her. Uh, I didn't think they didn't manage to kill her, but like they found her in her basement. Like yeah. they were looking for the killer for a while. And he used to kidnap kids and all of them. He used to go, Lord, shit. Have, have you seen Hostel? The movie Hostel? Uh, no, I haven't. You should see that movie if you're... That's not... That, it's like it's like a business where rich people, you know, bid for, you know, young travellers. Young travellers in uh, you know, countries like, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know, Czech or places, whoever, mm-hmm. you know, backpackers. Yeah. They get abducted. Mm-hmm. And then uh, these people you know, they are millionaires and billionaires of the world. So they just bid. And once whoever gets the, wins the auction, right? So he gets to kill the person the way he wants to. It's a very sick movie. It's oh, a very sick movie. Yeah. yeah and then, terrifying. and they show everything the way they kill. Yeah, it's disturbing. But it's based on a true story. I, you know, that's what, uh, that's really interesting because if a movie comes out, right? So there's this news around it that this happens. Ah, right. That puts you in a, you know, a very scary... You know what scares me more is the writers who think about this kind of stuff. 
don't say that. I I've, I've written like, stuff about that. Like if you can think about that and write a write a movie on it and direct it, then what's going on in your head? I exactly. I really want to talk about that. It's yeah. some other time when you know. I really because everything goes. So I think uh, the what we were talking about, like you know the how certain tendencies manifest in different ways in different people so maybe a writer you know writing about the dark stuff that yeah. they have felt is actually a more socially acceptable oh, way of dark way. Uh, you? No, 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 i i i i i didn't get it like will you explain like what did you mean by that uh, so uh, you know how we were talking before about how you know two people with say similar tendencies Gene, similar uh, parents and end up being opposite yeah end up behaving in totally different hmm, right. manner hmm. wherein some say become serial killers but other people with dark tendencies will probably go and you know write a really dark story express, about it uh, yeah so they express it in that manner <laughs> that yeah that you just gave me something <laughs> to think about so <laughs> yeah. i'm sure the next book will definitely not be a i'm not the only one okay there are many <laughs> writers so i'm not alone in this <laughs> <laughs> i would not but I do. I don't know. It's there's nothing to feel cool about it, but I do think that people who write, mm-hmm. I'm just saying out of introspection, right? Because I think like that. So people who write fiction and people who end up writing a few dark stories as well, dark as in, you know, mm-hmm. I think it's very natural in a way. एक तरीके से natural in the sense they're not running away from it. It happens. You know, every person. You never know what. It's like someone killed ten people, and someone killed one. पनिशमेंट भी सेम है सब कुछ सेम है वगैरह वगैरह मेन्जरिया कितना है वो डिपेंड करता है नो आई थिंक या आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट डेथ पेनल्टी सो इट वुड सब्जेक्टिवली डिपेंड अपॉन लाइक हाउ द केस इज हैंडल्ड एग्जैक्टली बट लाइक कैपिटल पनिशमेंट इज द अल्टीमेट पनिशमेंट दैट यू कैन गिव टू समवन हु इज किल वन पर्सन वर्सेस देम राइट सो दैट्स व्हाट आई एम सेइंग सो आई एम सेइंग दैट यू नेवर नो कैरन को कल मुझ पे किस बात पे गुस्सा आ गया यू लूज योर रीजन एंड यू जस्ट यू नो पिक समथिंग अप एंड किल मी you're not a serial killer or something so i'm just saying that writers most of the time you know think about tendencies and they just you know express themselves through yes. tendencies yeah. some of them who are scared to do that they try to refine it and all now i've come to terms with i'm like fuck it i'm going to write it whatever it is so if it's coming out if it's manifesting right. Honestly, so yeah, just, your book is not as that was 20 are uh, you haven't read what i've written right no. so i'm just saying sometimes i feel surprised that okay you're just issuing a warning right you know i work with you right then, <laughs> then no no so come on <laughs> so so the first thing i think what a writer needs to get out of is that mummy papa ke sochenge you know that's one of the major hindrances it's natural you know you don't want your folks to for example i had this guest right and we were talking about uh, legalization of marijuana and can can be said i was about to say cannabis and all so so maybe because of you <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, so then we were like shit mere dad ne channel subscribe kiya <laughs> So uh, when you are expressing yourself, you're not doing anything wrong if you're writing about it. Yeah. So people need to forget Kiwo. I think that's scary. Like, so when I was watching Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. I used to have dreams about all that blood and all the gore and everybody killing mm-hmm. each other. But now it has become so. I couldn't deal with it. Casual. I stopped watching. There are very few like you. I stopped watching because I used to wake up in the middle of the night <laughs> and I'm like, what is going on? Like, Mo- this is not. How did you tell yourself? Stop watching Game of Thrones. Exactly. Game. I don't know. I just. That's actually a great achievement. See, when you yeah. see, if you if you stop getting good sleep at night, like nothing yeah. happens. Yeah, she's like that. She she she, 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 she has kept food and sleep at a very <laughs> high pedestal. I know. I, 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 she didn't leave anything. So like, imagine the people who are making that, and we are just seeing it once. Those guys are editing it. They are filming it. They are making it. Mm-hmm. They have to listen to the soundtrack. They have to do everything possible. Mm-hmm. How are they dealing with it in their everyday life? Think about that. Like, I think it's boring for them. Let's. Just, it's, so, how do you feel after writing this? Not too different. Yeah. Right. Too it's same. Yeah. Like people did shit, man. Yeah. You can't stop criminals. That's one thing. Yeah. People need to come to terms with that. You can't stop murderers. Or these are tendencies yeah. that people have. Okay, you can. You know, I think law law enforcement is one thing. Let's just talk about law enforcement. So, how do yeah investigation? Hmm. How does that work? Where do you think the flaws are right now when it comes to serial killers? Hmm. And what do you think can be done in India? Um, We're talking about India right now. Yeah. So, just in terms of India, considering how there is no uh, comprehensive. work as yet on uh, serial killers right. the investigate 
investigative uh, agencies or you know the officers that work on uh, mm-hmm. such investigations don't really have a certain uh, set of rules guidelines or, maybe or yeah guidelines that you know they could work with right to pursue something like this mm-hmm. so uh, something could be a work of a serial killer mm-hmm. is something that just doesn't come to mind that often okay right so uh, uh so uh, take for example uh, the case of uh, mahanand naik who was oh, no idea. Um, yeah so he is in the book as well and uh, he used to kill uh, women uh, with a dupatta so that's why he's with her dupatta yeah with her okay. dupatta that's why he's called the dupatta killer okay uh, but basically uh, he had the same modus operandi of like killing women uh, near a uh, bus stop uh, toilets and you know leaving the bodies okay. there and this was a similar pattern in which uh, around nine women were found but mm. you know nobody could actually relate or link hmm. until somebody finally did hmm. so they could have caught on to this much earlier if they actually had some guidelines to work with and you know I, I, so i think that uh, not in india mm-hmm. but countries like whatever i say mm-hmm. us or wherever west so i think they have a branch of forensic psychologists they do and aid. they actually have psychologists actually uh, actively uh, working yeah. with the agencies it's not that they interfere guide. with the investigation they just they guide don't. right they, they guide. just guide them that's what you mm-hmm. are you are a counselor as well right i am a counselor so uh, when you say counselor you are tending to like normal people who come up with yes. their issues or not the because that isn't a uh, scene in india right now right it is not but that is something that i would like to exactly know. exactly but that's that's where your it, concern comes right yeah but it isn't really like a specialization that somebody could pursue mm-hmm. so maybe you know an agency or the police might approach you for on a case to case basis but yeah. it's not like a job a as freelance such. thing you know like a consultation like yeah. a consultation yeah. oh, oh why not a wing why not a government uh, funded wing like, exactly. it should be there it, right it should it be should there, be there but the only job is to not. tell because they forensic uh, psychologists mm-hmm. also help the judiciary as well when it comes to you know civil cases like custody kiske paas jayega and they actually give testimonies uh, in courts and right. you know they also have a say in uh, like lie detection or tests and such so they do kind of right. those tests i tell you something about police people in india as yeah. well okay so i know a few <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, uh, i think they also think that they are self sufficient in a way which they are they kind of, yeah they kind of crack crime as well but i think a help will always you know be better be better yes their job is to just uh, catch hold of the guy and connect yes. so that you know unka main pressure i think rehta hai after investigating how to connect the crime with the person it's mm-hmm. difficult that's the difficult part because exactly. court admissible badi cheeze nahi karta but you know what i'm saying there are so many cases right like where all should they look yeah, and you know what sort of pattern should they chase admission. at the end it's not just the crime they are dealing exactly. with it's like okay, yeah exactly policemen have but a also problem. i think like policemen are smart enough to crack normal you know whatever but then when it starts repeating and then there's a pattern so you need people like you yeah. you know to i actually identify those patterns and yeah. you know guide them in that manner mm. right or at least happen. you know for like police stations or investigative agencies across borders also to have a communication with each other okay because uh, i mean in state this borders age, across state across borders. state borders yeah because in this age we actually have so much like transient population across uh, states you know that mm. maybe cra- some crimes that have happened on this side of the mm. border and then carried forward to that side of the border mm. there could be a similar pattern but then there is nothing yeah, i did who's this guy 
the stone killer or so, so things were happening in mumbai and they were exactly. happening in kolkata as well right exactly so yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so there was also a copycat uh, killer exactly exactly was, uh, yeah yeah copying <laughs> but but yeah i mean that could also be the case right so there needs to be a better flow of communication or a better you know system in place basically which mm-hmm. could handle cases like this right right i think the problem with this country is people still don't consider psychology as an important part of why people think well said they don't they don't they which don't. yeah they don't and that's why they don't give it much importance in the legal issues and even in normal life i have friends who studied where did you study your psychology stuff from uh, i com- did my masters in uk university you, of york so i yeah, so i have a friend a close friend who did, who studied i criminology hmm. uh, criminal psychology from uk i think kings or something yeah. so it's just that so you do that and when you come to india and you see that there are no opportunities for you yeah, right exactly. so it's so not you like have you have to, have to carve to, your own opportunities exactly so so it's not like you need to create those opportunities or you know start with telling people you should serial kill so that we can come into business <laughs> that is good <laughs> <laughs> so i'm telling you guys it's really <laughs> So, because because you have no idea there are such people in every you know so people there are people who cause sickness so they can give yeah, a cure yeah. there are people who create cases so that they can be a lawyer there are cases you know people are there are twisted people everywhere i just came up with the thought you know people are doing it living it yeah this is something actually i was discussing even with my uh, friends a few days ago uh-huh. and it was just casual talk and uh, they were just like how do we know that you know you don't drive people crazy first and then you make right, them come to you for right, right. yeah so yeah psychologists you know they can yeah. do sort of so it's go, like you know it's like those uh, firemen who become arsonists so that then they could go and yeah you know, put out those yeah but <laughs> tell me something written that for human psychology are you allowed to see if people do know because it doesn't make no. you more biased you shouldn't i mean ideally you should not that's not a rule but i think it's, it's not a rule but it's a Like it's board. good practice because at the end of the day even the psychologist is a human right, right? so right. their biases are uh, you know going to come in way as hard as you try when you're speaking to a complete stranger as opposed to when you're hmm. speaking to your friend with whom you have a lot other contexts uh, in yes. addition to what they are telling right, you right. in therapy or whatever right. so your biases are at the end of the day going going to uh, okay. come in between yeah and it's not like you know uh, since you are a psychologist so you have the upper hand your friends have dirt on you as well eh? you can't yeah, talk around with your friends and your friend yeah, will like shut up and <laughs> i know <laughs> i know your stuff man and also uh, even it, it even comes down to how the person on the other side uh, perceives what you are telling you hmm. so a client would probably you know take something i say seriously versus when i speak to my family they or friends they and think. they are just yeah. like friends will saying, have this thing ki ye to bakwas karta hai yeah yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. because people you know you have this it's very common not just psychology but hmm. you know let's say friends yeah, yeah, yeah. so let's say a person is doing something which is really cool for the janta yeah. right but uh, friends will be like kya kar raha hai like gyan mat do exactly there there is uh, i think i think it's very natural yeah, ki thoda exactly there is yeah, a yeah. there is a slight amount of jealousy as well there is a uh, you know envy jealousy and competitiveness plus you know the person mm-hmm. so all these things matter there is i yeah, mean there's no denying this happens at home also what you're saying they'll, they'll go and tell some uncle or they'll be like tumhari yeah. baat nahi manta tum bol ke dekh lo <laughs> exactly yeah and they are looking at you from the position of you like you being a friend or like you being a cousin or mm-hmm. a niece or whatever right, right. so it definitely and it also i think it will hinder the amount they are able to say like how openly they will say everything because hmm. if you're related to me I'm probably hide stuff and that's obviously not good for the yeah it's it's not a good practice if you know someone yeah, true exactly. true so okay we are i i wish you all the luck with this book Thank you so it much. should go wild because i don't know if people love it's reading such stuff it's a new concept i have never oh. i think it's a new concept in india I think people yeah, are yeah, yeah. not given much thought to see it exactly like exactly yeah. Yeah. exactly yeah, everyone was that right now because yeah and and and, and yeah, I mean, exactly and also then in you know terms of how people perceive serial killers mm-hmm. our entire perception is very westernized exactly yes sense. yes which makes sense because you know yeah. in a way but but the because Indian crime shows are CIA 
This is a potential and Netflix also, India series. Yeah. I'm not lying. Yeah, Hopefully. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, why not? Yeah, I think they and should also when grab it. Right? About Indian serial killers, there are so many cultural contexts in what they mm. are doing. Yeah, yeah. You can't see that in the Western world. So, right. You know, you can't use the same theories yeah, like or Mark the same. Ali, you used to look for Mark Ali. Look like, at there has that crime in India. Right. Did you, did you hear about the New Zealand shooting? I did. Yes. Yeah. The the video is out. The video is out. It's been circulating. The video that guy... Sh- he recorded it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a camera on him. And I saw that. He entered the mosque and he just killed It's really messed up. It's killed. So, yeah, I mean, can, that, that's like same tendencies. It's so that And he was very happy. So Apparently, is, he's very happy about it. Obviously, because these guys lose their shit, right? But that is not serial crime. That is something that would come under the banner of terrorism. Hmm. And also like a murder spree, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Wherein, uh, like in serial crime, there is definitely a cool off period between, mm-hmm. you know, when you. Yeah, then like uh, strategy and, and then the process. Pattern, yeah. Some yeah, exactly. And when we uh, talk about such type of crimes, they almost always come from a very strong belief hmm. that they are the victims. Right. And right. whatever they are doing, hmm. they are doing to save their own. Uh, in group or mm-hmm. you know to save their own place position uh, in the world okay so yeah yeah enough of this mera garam ho gaya so yeah let's just step out of it uh, i want to talk about monk prayogshala or monk prayogshala <laughs> since it's monkey <laughs> Oh, so yeah, tell us about it. What is it about? Uh, so uh, it's basically a social sciences, behavioral sciences, a research organization. Nice. And it is a not-for-profit. So uh, we are uh, internally funded in that sense. Okay. So we uh, do have departments of psychology and mm. economics and uh, sociology. And do they take interns? I will apply. Yeah, I we do. Oh, yeah. Shit, shit. <laughs> That's psychology. Yeah, it is. So, so, what, what, so they, uh, they are into research. Yes. So, are they planning to help uh, what corporates or you know uh, what uh, so uh, government? It is both. So, uh, I mean, we are doing academic research. Okay. So the majority of what we do is uh, purely uh, academic research, right. just putting up scholarly work out. There. Right, right. But uh, we also take on uh, projects from other organizations. So, say uh, if they want to you know, do some internal assessments hmm. or an impact evaluation of a program that they have run right. or something like that. So they can definitely commission that uh, hmm. work to us. So, yeah, so in that sense, we mostly do academic work, but also uh, like working with corporates and such. Right. And since you, you know, help people, hmm. uh, let's just get out of the whole serial killer thing and let's just talk about psychology and your you know clients in general so i just want to know what's your take on mental well-being like in general in general because you know it's not that everyone's going to be as extreme as a serial killer right okay. so yeah generally what do you think people are facing right now is there a particular thing that you want to address what's happening right now and how it will affect the future generation i'm talking in terms of purely in terms of mental well-being uh, so uh, right now actually uh, I see a lot in terms of, you know, stress or anxieties with respect to work hmm. or, you know, maintaining a work-life balance basically. Right. So a lot of people are stressed in that sense because, hmm. you know, like they don't know how to sort of maintain that uh, balance, how much time do you give work and like the happiness when level is, you know, is coming the, down. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Because when people are working, you know, they're anxious that they are not able to give time to their families Mm. or, you know, pursue their personal hobbies or whatever their interests are. And when they're actually doing uh, those things, they keep on feeling guilty that they are not working enough. Exactly. So, very competitive also now. Yeah, exactly. Everyone wants to be big. Yeah. Exactly. So, in that sense people's expectations from their own, from their yes, own yes, selves yes, yes. Uh, are getting more and more unrealistic. They're, they're putting and themselves under immense pressure, right? Exactly. No. They're putting immense pressure on themselves for no reason. Like, you know, know your limitations, mm. know your boundaries, how much you can realistically achieve. Okay. 
Yeah, and yeah. and I've also experienced this is uh, all again out mm-hmm. of introspection. So what really you know puts a person down sometimes and maybe I won't. I am definitely not against social media because you know <laughs> it's like I mean, it'll be like hating some <laughs> hating the game saying. and you're playing it. So that doesn't make sense. But yeah, since you extract a lot of you know stimulation through social media mm-hmm. and whatever you're doing. See, for example, an artist, right? Mm-hmm. If he earlier when there was no social media so if an artist was working on a particular piece right so he would work on that let's say painting right Right. he would work for i don't know months or whatever his you know style is so he's focused on that and then he you know brings that out and then he gets either appreciated or you know gets really appreciated about it so he extracts pleasure out of it right now Hmm. it's just you create it and it's out there hmm. and you get your you know likes you are there. Time. so it, it it tells you to okay do that again again and again so sometimes days are good when you get appreciated right it makes you feel good on the other day since it's so you know the the it's getting pumped very regularly frequently so you get likes or you get comments and whatever people are telling you it's good work hmm. the day you don't get it you just feel yeah, like you know it's, it's like you're doing yeah. drugs eh? it's like yes, you're just exactly. you know withdrawal symptoms that yeah. shit what the hell right. is happening exactly. I, wanna, I wanna do it yeah. I think it puts someone it in. does because then you're putting your own like your own entire self worth on how many likes you're getting on social media yeah or, that's you know, just an example just an example so I think yeah you know getting appreciated correct or you know fame whatever correct. people are after so if that's the only reason why you want to engage with people mm. via those mediums, then people really you know, need to reassess. So, so what do you thoughts. think is the reason I think people want, you know, attention or whatever? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> anybody does, right? That's the natural yeah, process of right. being a human being. But then, you, end of the day, opinions are subjective. So, you should also know how to handle something right. that doesn't go well for mm. you or something that others probably, you know, don't take that well. Mm. You can't base your self opinion on the picture of what other people do. Exactly. It, it's easier said than done. That, which is a mistake a lot of people actually make. They, I mean, their entire self worth depends on what other people are telling them. Yeah. yeah. I, I try to stay away from that. And it's also, very, I think, natural to be like that because we live in a society, right? People never lose their identity because then they're like, okay, people these days like, like people yeah. who maybe do this. Huh. So I'm going to start so doing that. So I'm going to start doing mm. this. But that's not who you are. Maybe you want to sit at home and chill and read a book and not go out and drink beer. Yeah. So yeah but since that won't make a great Instagram post. Exactly. So, <laughs> you know. You it's really messed up. Fucked up. Yeah, yeah, I mean this whole thing of just trying to keep up. Right. Yeah, you yeah. know, people should sometimes just breathe and, you know, take a step back and like reassess what they're doing. Right, right. True, true. And... What does a psychologist do to chill? Like, what do you do? What's, uh, you are also a feminist. So, should, should I be scared? Should I be scared? Because, because... I don't know, should you? I, I don't know, tell me. Because, you know, we're, I, I believe, I have this, you know, and I'm not scared to say it out loud. Mm-hmm. Uh, EDC is omnipresent, right? It's everywhere. Yeah. There are people who are, you know, blaming feminists that uh, whatever, you know, they, they somehow deny that women aren't, you know, Facing okay. any kind of discrimination mm. in whichever field. There are idiots like that. And there are idiots who are feminists. And they're just hating ra- indiscriminately men. They're like, you know, they just hate men. So I'm, they are fucking idiots. I'm not lying. They are. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just, yeah. Because that does, not because I'm taking it personally. I don't give two shits if someone says to me, yeah. Ki, you know, I hate men. I'm just saying they're being very stupid because. So it's this, I think it's this thing of. The not all men hashtag that you know people. Okay, I don't know about this hashtag. Men. Not all men. Really? No, yeah, I'm. I'm like you know some some things. It's are, a very like it's the first anti-feminist thing that you will see on okay. social media. Not all men. Not are all assholes. men because it, because any time a woman you know makes a statement like men this men that they are generalizing right? everybody is like not all men but you should understand that if you have not engaged in that behavior it does not apply to you it, and you are going to feel guilty i'm not i'm not talking about those about, men. i'm not talking about those. i'm talking about those women or men who are pro feminism hmm. who ra- who just say out like there are you you can't deny it. there are mm, women who just hate men who just hate the they, they're not yeah they do yeah. They're, they're everywhere India may I don't think it's that prevalent See, yet 
but since we tend to copy See, west in, within any ideology mm-hmm. there are bound to be extremists yeah exactly exactly so really i'm just calling them out they are they are against yeah about, uh, that i'm i'm surprised but generally how, i i mean i don't understand why people are scared of the label feminist such they, they shouldn't be because it's a movement and women do yeah. require now is the time there is you know earlier when there was lawlessness hmm. you couldn't help it women were you know they were everyone knows how they were treated during times of wars or whatever hmm. everyone knows what happened right so now there is law to protect them this no one's going to you know everyone will have that kind of thing that okay you can't force yourself though people still are doing that so it's the time and uh, i think uh, mm, sanitary issues you know since we have evolved uh, india mein bahut bada concern tha yeah. so women do feel empowered i'm talking about the rural women and all after and men had got nothing to do with it it was just that you know taboo or social you know Correct. stigma so once they were getting empowered they were coming out they were willing yes. to work and all i think the gap is filling mm. but i don't like the fact when you know how do these women go home and face their fathers and brothers and like dad you are you know <laughs> keep your toxic masculinity away from me it doesn't make sense exactly people who do this and yeah. this See? Is, so i find it fake feminism mm-hmm. because you can't generalize and say you hate all men the point of feminism is equality there are, uh, let's be yeah. like, it's a bit personal you can choose not to answer but has your father ever discriminated between uh, if you have siblings or whatever no, if you have no i don't have any siblings but okay but do uh, you feel have you ever n- not really i have been lucky in uh, that sense people like your father people like my but father but then again i mean i come from a background of you know i live in mumbai which is mm-hmm. relatively a liberal right, city right right it is liberal, it is and it is a safe place as well so that it doesn't make much sense to you know put that many restrictions mm. uh, upon women in terms okay. of like their freedom of movement or, or i come from jammu it's not but, as liberal as uh, exactly, mumbai but so it does you know? depend on the context but that's the thing na like you can't put everything in one umbrella exactly under, exactly it's a very intersectional yes and thing. it is necessary so it is necessary what what a uh, what the feminist thing to do in a certain situation in a urban a uh, background such as where i come from mm-hmm. and uh, what the feminist thing to do would be in a rural, rural yes, place yes, maybe yes, say or also you know in terms of socially marginalized women hmm. and such right it vastly differs right so you can't people need to understand so that. in that sense there are different feminisms you yeah. know you yeah, can't yeah, say yeah, that yeah. this is one feminism which applies to no no i'm not i'm not i'm not taking yeah. the, i'm not generalizing exactly. i'm just calling out those who do because there are men like you know before the feminist movement started there was this guy raja ram mohan roy everyone knows right he was the one who started the reform sati ke against and all so yeah. there are men like him there are men like your father my father her father mm. so we are there man and we we we, we are the we are half of the reason why But women are getting thing, empowered right it's not about those men because they are basically behaving like decent human beings hmm. and they are doing what they are supposed to do they, right, they right. are not doing something you know out of the way exactly game. exactly yeah Yeah, so that's so why that's we're not calling for International Men's Day. <laughs> Let's celebrate it. There are a lot of men who do suppress the women. They are. They are. They are assholes. They are assholes. They do. They do. Yeah, they do. And it's definitely very, very primitive very mindset. They aren't exactly. evolved. Yeah. And even when we speak in urban contexts, also like uh, we would claim to be feminists, or you know, like that the women in the family are allowed to do everything mm. which they. wish or you know have careers or whatever but still you know somewhere you see that uh, low key you know sexism in things like if you are at a family gathering mm-hmm. and there are some chores to be done somebody would naturally just call out to the women in the family to those things as opposed to calling out yeah, the men yeah that's true yeah or so you know in, in a lot of cases like women eat after the men are done mm-hmm. or okay. the children are done okay. yeah. so there are these small things that you Also, See, the women will always eat in the rotis. Burnt na by mistake, the women will eat. Exactly. Shit. Yeah. Okay. I, it is true. It is true. It doesn't. Like if my mom is cooking and sometimes you know by mistake one side of the roti gets a little overcooked. So she won't give it to anyone else. But she will. Huh. ऐसे ही होता है मतलब it's kind of like a understood thing now that women are the ones who have to compromise, which I don't understand by like. 
Now yeah. the whole issue of so how parents are pressurizing their daughters to get married early when daughters see that we want to work and be people of our own. Mm. I don't want to depend on my husband or his business or like whatever he is doing. For me to be myself. It's changing now. It's changing. I see it changing. Yeah, exactly. It's not it's I know parents are worried that they are married in India. In India, it's the biggest thing in India. And even before when you asked about you know, how my uh, father has right, treated yeah. me hmm. throughout, uh, that's also because a lot of things uh, are there which uh, he has seen from my perspective. So hmm. you know, his view is also have also changed. Which he has seen from my perspective. So his views has also, have also changed they have throughout to, they his have life. To. It right? makes sense. Because, because whatever he knew was probably from the perspective of hmm. his elders or you know, That was happening since ages, right? So he learned that. Or whatever. Right. So, you know, once you have a daughter and once she brings, or like any female in the That's family, the once part. she brings a fresh That's perspective That's a good part because your you, father was open to exactly. evolving, right? That, he was that's open. The, that is the point, right? right? right. Nobody is saying like everybody is born, you know, perfect and, you know, should have hmm. certain ideologies yeah. in place. Right. All anybody is saying is like be open and just listen. Hmm. Right. But that's the problem, you know, I... I find that a lot of men have this ego issue where they never accept that exactly. they are incorrect. Exactly. And they will never be open to anyone else telling them what to do. Exactly. So that is where the issue happens because obviously you're not perfect. You come from a different time period maybe. Hmm. Maybe you have been brought up in a different way because of the people who come from a different uh, time. So, but then the point is to evolve, right? Hmm. We are human exactly. at the end of the day, but hmm. you can't stop yourself because you'll be like, no, I can't let them through, like be right. And they, all. They're, they're finally gonna people like these, you know, who aren't willing to evolve. They're they're gonna get ostracized. They're gonna die a dinosaur's death. <laughs> that that's gonna happen. It's it's gonna happen because things are changing, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, willingly or unwillingly, people will happen. Yeah, hmm. yeah, it happens. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Sampada, it was it was a lot of fun. I wish you all the very you know this i think this is going to do awesome i i just think yeah, that, hope so. yeah, yeah, yeah it's very interesting serial killers i'm i'm going to read this whole thing and best of luck with this thank, thank you, you so for much. doing this with us thank, thank you, you so much it was a pleasure being here thank you